Today's word of God comes from the book of Psalms 73, verses 23 through 28. As we read today's scripture, I hope that we can hear the voice of the living God. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Those who are far from you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the Sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all your deeds. Amen. Fellow believers, how were you all in this past week? Outside the service hall, spring has come. The parking lot is empty, but the children are riding their bicycles. I cannot see you here, but I believe that you are all at the, at the Lord's sanctuary, worshiping Him in your own ways. Let's all greet each other today by saying, I don't deserve you as such a gift. I don't deserve such a gift as you. I don't deserve such a gift as you. Let's all say this to each other. Among um, couples, married couples, and among your families, with your children as well. Today, or last week, we talked about holy distancing because of the term social distancing, we, what kind of distancing does God want from us? We've talked about that last week. First of all, we talked about distancing ourselves from familiar things, from evil, and lastly, from anxiety, distancing ourselves from anxiety. Distancing, freeing ourselves from compulsively doing things or fe feeling that we have to do things, from fierce competition, allowing ourselves to truly rest and have peace in our hearts in God. So now we would, we have, uh, we have thought about what it is to truly distance ourselves. So that now that we have talked about social distancing, we, I found out that there are other ways to talk about this. In some places, uh, they are not using the word social, the phrase social distancing, but if we say social distancing, we think about uh, disconnecting from everything socially, that we are not only physically distancing ourselves, but physic for distancing ourselves from the society. But in, but in reality, we are simply needing to distance ourselves physically, not, uh, not, um, for, not um, uh, stop connecting altogether with each other. Uh, at Stanford University in America, uh, they they have found, uh, they have chosen to use the phrase distanced, distant socializing. That we are, we still socialize, but from a distance, from not being with each other physically. Rather than using social distancing, it will be distant socializing. We are not. Well, not together, we are apart, but we are still, uh, we can still have relationships. We can still be, we can still pursue intimate relationships. How can we do this? We, now there are a lot of discussions about how we may do this. 
I don't know about what is going on in our country, but I have heard that in other countries, people in self-quarantine, uh, that pe where people are stay at home and um, conducting activities, uh, they have find um, ways to socialize through online activities by uh, by um, conducting or p by engaging in video chats, uh, watching each other or dining with each other by having f food in front of them, but through but through um, so uh, video chats. How can we socialize without being physically? connected without being physically together. And there have been um, research, there have been a lot of explorations about how we can do this. So we talked last week again about how uh, we may socially distance ourselves. Today I would like to talk about in opposite, how may we become closer to things? as opposed to distancing. Well, how can we become closer to things in this time, in this very frustrating time? First, I would like to raise this question. What do you think, what do you think God wants to be close to? We can talk, we can, we can find an answer to this in many ways, since you are probably amongst others, among with your families, if you can find the answer to this. How can we, how can we get close, or what does God want us, wants us to get close to? God wants us to become nearer to us. That would be one of the answers that could be given. We're looking at Psalm 73, verse 27 to 28. Those who are far from you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all your deeds. The psalmist here says that it is his blessing to be near the Lord. It is a blessing to be near the Lord, he says. In the Bible, in the Bible, it tells us, in the New Testament, it tells us in James chapter 4, verse 8, come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, he says. One of the most important things that we must strive to do is to become nearer to God. It is also one of our goals to become closer to God. As believers, it is one of our greatest tasks. The Bible consistently tells us that God wants to be near us. When God made Adam, He always He looked at him in all all the ways, and He saw how lonely He was, and knew about His loneliness. He pitied how He felt He was lonely. That's how closely God looked at Adam. And so he made for Adam a partner. He looked over Adam. He looked over his heart. He was very close to Adam. God was very close to Adam. But God, uh, but Adam moved farther and farther away from God because of mankind's sin, because of Adam and Eve's sin. And so God could not help but to kick them out of the Garden of Eden. Although God had pro wanted to live with Adam and Eden and, and mankind, Adam and Eve and mankind, and in the Garden of Eve, Garden of Eden for a long time, his first plan failed because of mankind's mistake. Although that is the case, God still came to man. God f tried to come near to mankind. At the climax of God wanting to be nearer to man is Jesus Christ, is the incarnation of Jesus Christ. God comes to us, God's, God comes to earth from a very far, far away place. 
and he comes in the in the man's flesh, in the flesh of man, and comes in the very closest form of man. Incarnation is the closest form of God to mankind. And this God comes to our door. The Bible tells us this. In Revelations chapter 3, verses 20, says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. The sin of, God, of man has distanced us from God, but God con continuously comes close to us and wants to be near us. He comes to us incarnated and bees with us and becomes with us. Emmanuel, he stands at the door and knocks at the door, the Bible tells us. The distance between God and us is just one door away. That's how close God is to us. He's knocking at our hearts. This nearness of God does not is not has nothing to do with what we have done, what our efforts. It is entirely of God's doing. God has come to us. God has narrowed the distance between Himself and us. He has come from an unfathomable place to be with us. He has come on earth, come to our world to be with us. Some people say that in order for us to become closer to God, that we have to do something. We have to make sacrifices. That is the only way that we can become nearer to God, that we have to lose out, that we have to um, give things up. We have to suffer and walk the walk of pain that we have to let everything go and give everything up to be near to God. But as we can see, as we have just seen, God is already near us. As long as we put forth our hands, as long as we extend our hand to Him, God, in the form of the Holy Spirit, will come to us, will be with us. Even then, God, pe people, mankind, gets a ladder and tries to go up to the sky, walks up ladders after ladder to get up to heaven, to go up to heaven. How, how far would we actually be able to go? Would we actually be able to reach God that way? God has come to us. That is why we can meet Him. That is why we can find Him. If so, how can we meet this God that has come so near us? What can we do to meet Him, to, to be nearer to Him? Although He is very near, it is not easy to meet Him. There is a place, a place where we can meet Him, and that place is the unfamiliar place, an unfamiliar, unfamiliar place, a strange place. If you remember from last week, God wants us to leave the unfamiliar, uh, familiar place. He wants us to leave the comfort zone. He wants us to leave the comfortable place and go to the unfamiliar place. The reason is God can only be discovered in the unfamiliar place. It is not easy for us to discover God in the comfortable place or the familiar place. God is always with us. He's right in front of us. But it is not easy to see Him in a, in a familiar place, in a comfortable place, in our comfort zones. But if we go to the unfamiliar place, it becomes different. We can find where He calls us. He, you can find Him running to us. We can see this God. 
Jake, the story of Jacob uh, tells us this very well. Jacob left his homeland, his mother Rebecca, to go to an unfamiliar place. He found a stone to sleep on, and he lay down to sleep. Let's imagine this. He liked being at home. He liked being at home with his mother in the kitchen, making food. He liked to cook. But now Jacob was in a foreign place, an unfamiliar place, in the wilderness, in the, in the outside. He was outside looking at the sky in darkness. And there he dreams. The, the heavens open up and the angels of God go up and down the ladder. And here, the Bible tells us in Genesis 28, verse 16, when Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place and I was not aware of it. Jacob was there with God. God was with him indeed. God was always there with Jacob from his birth. But now in this wilderness, he sees God. Jacob sees God. And finally, he is able to realize that surely the Lord is in this place and I was not aware of it. He finally Jacob finally was able to see God in this unfamiliar place. Fellow believers, we have never experienced such a situation. Our family, our education, our worship, fellowship, and social activities, all of this is so unfamiliar to us. Moreover, our economy, our businesses. In the past, all the stores, all of the enterprises that ran so well, that were operated under such stable conditions, are failing. We are anxious, we are worried, and we are frustrated in this unfamiliar place. But here, we can see God being with us. In this unfamiliar place, I hope that you can see God, that we, while we confront this unfamiliar situation, this unfamiliar place, I hope you can see God, because God is there. God was with us in the familiar place, but God appears to us in the unfamiliar place. We can discover God in this unfamiliar place. In the Bible, we see how Moses meets God in an unfamiliar place. Moses was in the wilderness for 40 years doing the exact same thing, tending to the sheep, walking around, wandering, feeding them, and that was it for 40 years. In this journey of through the wilderness, he sees a burning bush. It was the first time that he saw this bush. And Moses approaches the burning bush. And here, Moses sees God. Here, Moses meets God. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. This verse is extremely valuable. When we go near a strange place, the God tells him not to come any nearer, to stay right where you are. When we go near a strange place, the strangeness itself is not the goal. It is the strange place that becomes the medium for us to come closer to God. So God tells us to stand there, to stand before the place. God tells Moses not to come any closer. 
and God tells Moses to take off his shoes. It's a very strange sight. It's a very strange thing to ask for. It's a very unfamiliar thing to ask for, to, to, to take off his shoes. In front of the burning bush, he cannot go any further. Moses has to take off his shoes, and he does so. He stands barefooted, and he can feel the heat that of the burning bush transferred to the ground, to his heat, to his body. He feels the presence of God with his body. In an unfamiliar place, in, an un in front of an unfamiliar site, he has an unfamiliar experience of God, the presence of God. He has probably never had to take off his shoes in the wilderness, but he did so for the first time and meets God. Fellow believers, we have in front of us a very unfamiliar circumstance, a very unfamiliar situation, but I hope you do not fear in this situation, that you do not uh, settle down and you do not um, compromise with this situation. I hope that you can find God who calls us, who comes nearer to us, who is coming nearer to us, who is knocking at our doors. I hope you meet with our God. God wants more than anything to be nearer to us. So how then may we meet him? How, in what way shall we meet God? Jesus, incarcerated, incarcerated, came to us, came right in front of us. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then he also says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is from the book of John. The Lord used his blood to bring us closer to God, to bring us nearer to God. This is Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, we can approach God. Through Jesus Christ, we become nearer to God. We go, go into a closer relationship, an intimate relationship. What does it mean to approach Jesus Christ? What does that mean? Does that mean that we have to carry something to Him? Do we need to do good deeds? Do we need to evangelize and bring more people to Him? Do we have to uh, routinely give worship? Do we have to make offerings? Do we have to um, contribute um, to the society, become elders, deacons? Is that how we become closer to Jesus? Of course, there is a little bit of a relationship, but the direct meaning of coming closer to Jesus, approaching Jesus, is uh, opening our hearts to Jesus. What does that mean? As we have heard last week, we said last week that we must distance ourselves from anxiety, that in all of our lives, we are motivated by anxiety. It's almost, um, it's very similar to the order of Pharaoh, how Pharaoh used um, his Israeli slaves to, uh, to um, do the work in Egypt. It's anxiety that motivates us to do things. So we cannot rest, we cannot truly be at peace being motivated by anxiety. What is it to be in Jesus? To be in Jesus is to put everything down before Him and to trust Him, leave things to Him, pray to Him, and wait before Him. We consistently want to do things with our own efforts. We strive 
to do things. But when we let go, we can feel that Jesus is with us. So how and when can we come back to this place and gather together in worship? I, every day, at least multiple times a day, I think about when we can resume our worship, resume our group, uh, group, uh, group gatherings. But then I realize that I should let it all go and put it before God and allow Jesus to work for us, that God will work for our gathering again to come back together. This is perhaps the way to become closer to God, not trying to do things myself, but to allow God to work for us, God to guide us. Wait in prayer. Perhaps that is the true way, the real way to become closer to God. I will want to tell you, I want to share with you one more thing before I end. Uh, being closer to God means uh, holding on to the Word, uh, reading the Bible, being closer to the Word. The Word has life. The Word gives us life. The Word will bring us back to life and change us. Let's hold on to the Word and become nearer to God, to Jesus. I commend you, be closer to God. Be closer to Jesus. Let the Holy Ghost work in you. In prayer, in pa with patience, let's wait for God to work His grace upon us. Let's pray. God, we wish to become closer to you, Lord. We, you are already at the door. Allow us to open our hearts to you and receive you in such unfamiliar and frightening circumstances. Help us to enjoy the true peace that you give us. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.